Welcome back to PBC on FS1 here from the Door Federal Event Center in Flint, Michigan, about 75 miles northwest of Detroit as we get set for our co-main event of the evening as we take a look at our Corona tail of the tape. You see Dominique Dalton is four years older than Jamonte Clark, but Clark has the advantage when it comes to the height and the reach. Ladies and gentlemen, live on FS1, from Flint, Michigan. Premier boxing champions now features eight rounds in the junior middleweight division. The three judges ringside are John Belize, Dan Grischuk, and Ben Rochester. And the referee in charge, when the bell sounds, Michael Griffin. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he comes in wearing the blue, white, and the gray. His professional record stands at 19 wins, 10 of those coming by way of knockout against one loss and one bout even. Fighting out of Detroit, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dominique Dalton. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the black with the pink. As a professional, he's undefeated, 12 wins, seven of those coming by way of knockouts. Hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Jamonte, quite assassin, Clark. I gave you guys my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands and protect yourselves always. I want you to touch gloves now, men. You're boxing at the bell. God bless you both. Dominique Dalton and Jamonte Clark. Clark, undefeated 12 and 0. He has been a pro for just over three years, having come off a win over Ivan Golub that actually happened to be one of the supporting bots on your last title defense against Denis Shafikov back on June 30th, Robert. Yeah, um, that was a tough fight. Close fight, got the job. Uh, Clark has to uh, keep that jab in his face and, and, and use that reach and the right to his advantage. Dominique Dalton has won two in a row since losing to Justin Deloach last September. As Dalton, under the, out of the famed Crunk Boxing Gym in Detroit, actually said that Emmanuel Stewart, who passed away five years ago, called him the man-child because when he was 12 or 13, he actually sparred with top-level professionals. Oh yeah, coming up, me and Dalton actually grew up in Amherst as well. And, uh, you, you can see the experience he had growing up, how much ring poison he had. What's interesting is that Jamonte Clark, his hero happens to be Aaron Pryor Sr., the former world champion out of Cincinnati. Dominic Dalton, one of his main sparring partners when he was coming up as a young man, was Aaron Pryor Jr., the son of Aaron Pryor Sr. We ones around uh, the Cincinnati era as premier Aaron Pryor Sr., you know, as well as myself. Straight left by Jamonte Clark. Clark has a significant reach and height advantage. And also his power becoming uh, behind those long punches. Well, Jamonte Clark is a young fighter who doesn't say a lot, but he's all about demonstrating his talent and allowing his skills to speak for themselves. Oh yeah, he doesn't say much. He just puts in the work in the gym and uh, he shows in a fight. This is only the second time that Clark has been in there for a scheduled third round. Had a terrific amateur career, 82 and 18. He's trained under Kevin Bedford. Me and Clark inspired uh, plenty of rounds as well in the gym in the Cincinnati area. I can say this guy is real skillful and has a lot of punches. I mean, a lot of power coming behind those long punches. When Dominic Dalton looks in to close the distance, he knows that that's exactly what he has to do, but so far, he has been unsuccessful. 
Dalton is a smart fighter. He'll probably take him a round or two, you know, to get the feel of things. Another straight left down the middle for Jamonte Clark. The first round, Jamonte Clark dominating Dalton. We are back, PBC on FS1, Jamonte Clark. Squaring off against Dominic Dalton. There you see Kevin Bedford speaking with Jamonte Clark. You look very good in the first round, Robert. Oh, yes. Uh, finding that range and using that uh, height to his advantage. And for Clark, he wants to build on that victory that he had over Ivan Gold. It was a close fight, but he said that he learned quite a bit from having a very difficult matchup like that. Kevin Bedford, his trainer, told us it's good to get a firefight like that early in your professional career. Oh, yeah, that was a, a, a great, big, big win for him. Clark is definitely uh, establishing that jab good and keeping him um, at bay and using his reach. Jab there by Jamonte Clark as Dominic Dalton is trying to close the distance, but again, he's got to be able to start to throw a little bit more instead of waiting on the outside because Clark will pick him apart. For Dalton, he has to start down at the body in order to get him inside and land big punches. Because uh, Clark is definitely using that uh, reach, reach good, keeping him on the outside. And Clark threw an uppercut, it missed but that is starting to become more a part of his repertoire. Oh, yeah, facing an um, orthodox fighter, fighting the left hand and the uppercut is a, a dangerous punch for him. Clark has to stay on the outside and not let Dalton crowd him on the inside, keep using that jab and keeping him on the outside. If you are Dominic Dalton, he told us that they focus really on dealing with bigger, taller fighters and closing the distance. But so far, Jamonte Clark has been very wise to keep Dalton at bay. Oh, yes. As long as uh, Clark keep him at bay and on the outside, of the, uh, on the outside, he, he would pretty much control this fight. But uh, Dalton has found a little few, few inside shots on the outside and then big shots on the top. Dominic Dalton's trainer is Jonathan Banks, who used to train Vladimir Klitschko, and was also a fighter himself. Vladimir gave specific instructions to Jonathan Banks and told him to inform Dalton that Dalton is a driving force when it comes to his tenacity. That's exactly what he wanted to get across to Dominic Dalton. Oh yeah, like I said before, Dalton is a smart fighter. And uh, if you get in there and bang with you, and can take you out if you give him a chance. Dalton just stumbled, they crossed over feet. Dalton actually, Robert, used to spar with Vladimir Klitschko. He was in a couple of camps. That is how courageous and how much he's just willing to fight anybody. I believe it, I believe it. Final stages of the second between Jamonte Clark and Dominic Dalton in your area. I will have my eyes transfixed on the Lions and the Bears. Hopefully Chicago can get a victory over Detroit with Mitchell Trubisky. But right now, we are focused in on the third round. Jamonte Clark and Dominic Dalton. Jamonte Clark so far have him ahead 2-0 over Dalton, Robert. Oh, yeah. He, like, I said, like I said before, he's found a home with that jab. He's having a good jab and keeping him on the outside and, and landing that left hand at wheel. Steps in with his jab and he places that straight left down the middle. And Dalton is trying to block some of those and parry those away. But Jamonte Clark with that jab is so long and he connects and it and pesters him. Dalton has to find a way to get him inside and land big punches to slow him down, to slow Clark down. When we asked Jamonte Clark about being around the likes of Adrian Broner, yourself, Rashid Ward, and all guys who have been world champions or current world champions, he told us in the fighter meetings that it motivates him. It really amps
pumps him up and fires him up as you want to get to that level. Oh yeah, when we all train around each other and we all motivate each other, you know, give each other pointers and insiders and, and what, what we like to see, you know, each other do more inside the ring and in the gym. And he's actually been in camp with you along with Adrian Broner and Jermel Charlo and Terrence Crawford as well. And now he's really picking up his activity is Jamonte Clark. Yeah, Jamonte Clark is doing a good job with the combinations and, the, and like I said before, the jab. 70 seconds remaining in the third. The jab is the key for Clark in this, in this fight. Keeping that jab in his face and landing that left hand. Now Clark fighting with his back against the ropes. Dalton, this is exactly what he wants to do. Crowd Jamonte Clark and start throwing big shots. Yeah, this is where this is where Dalton want Clark on the ropes, you know, banging him on the inside and, and landing punches. Dalton at 27 years of age, he realizes a win would not be so good for him. And now he closed the distance. He's fighting on the inside, but Clark is winning the little to oblige. Right now, Clark is fighting Dalton's game and needs to get back on the outside, landing that jab. Well, a straight left right on the temple that backed up Dominique Dalton. But Dalton is not to be deterred. Dalton isn't backing down. You know, he has a ring experience and, and, and the best to go in there and finish him. Just a cagey veteran is Dominique Dalton. A straight left to punctuate round three. Welcome back to BBC on FS1. Here you see Robert Easter Jr.'s unofficial scorecard. He has Jamonte Clark ahead, 30-27. And Clark isn't even, he's barely breaking his sweat. Seems to be very relaxed and fresh. Oh yeah, Clark is uh, definitely uh, relaxed in the ring, he's finding that jab and he's landing the punches and keeping him at bay, keeping uh, Dalton at bay. And Clark, this is his third fight this year. Started it off March 14th with a victory over Gaku Takahashi. Followed it up with a victory over Ivan Golu back in June. Yeah, those were two big impressive wins for uh, Clark. Confidence builders as well. Oh yeah, definitely. But now Dominic Dalton is swarming Jamonte Clark. I think uh, Dalton figured out what he has to do. He has to get on the inside and land punches in order to win this fight. He's got to throw caution to the win at some point. It has to be smart, calculated aggression. And uh, judging by the names that he has been in with, Andy Lee, uh, Aaron Pryor Jr., Vladimir Klitschko, and also having defeated Julian Williams, who will fight tomorrow night against Ishe Smith. Uh, that experience should serve him well here in the fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, he, uh, he definitely has ring poise and, and experience. But he has to find his way to get an inside and, and land those big punches in order to stay in this fight. When Dalton actually fought Keith Thurman at the 2008 Olympic Trials, and it may have been a headbutt there as they are both, seems to be a laceration. If we can go ahead and take a look on the eyebrow of Jamonte Clark, there is a cut above, right above the eyelid on Jamonte Clark, and Robert, that seems to be in a bad spot. Oh yeah, over the eye, any blood can trickle in your eye and, and, and affect your, your, your vision uh, in the fight. And that was an inadvertent headbutt. It was accidental. But that is a cut that is going to require some attention. And again, for the second time, second straight fight, Robert, a cut man is going to be a big factor. Oh yeah, cut man is important. Especially why he's up on the scorecards. Just at the midway point in the Now Dalton sensing that he could sort of get that blood to start trickling down more into the eye of Jamonte Clark and use it to his advantage. Right, usually when a fighter is cut, fighters try to take advantage of a cut and aim more. Uh, getting the head, getting the uh, fighter's head mentally. Dominic Dalton is trying to push around Jamonte Clark and physically overpower him, but he isn't being successful in that process. Oh yeah, he's aiming for that cut though. You know
because he hasn't cut and uh, like I said, it, it messes with fighters' mind when you cut. So he, he's putting the pressure on him a little bit more. Just under 40 seconds remaining here in the fourth. A big straight right hand, the best punch of the fight for Dominic Dalton. He followed it up with another straight right. I think and that cut may be bothering Clark just a little bit. Could be impairing his vision just slightly. And he took his glove and he brushed away some of the blood. And Robert, absolutely that is the case. Oh, yeah. See, this is when the cut man comes into play. And it's important right about now. So Clark, who has, who was doing very well in the fight, the blood above the right eye, and now he has to deal with some adversity. As we see some of the action from Dominic Dalton, you're watching PBC here on FS1. Welcome back to PBC on FS1. Jelante Clark, a headbutt, opened up a cut above the right eye, and they are attending to that. And Clark had some issues with it. He actually used the glove to try to brush away some of the blood in his eye. Oh, yeah, he did a good job keeping his composure, though, even though he got cut in that round. And that is where the clash of heads, where the blood started. So you just saw where the headbutt started, the blood above the right eye. And we'll see if Clark can keep himself dry from that blood to continue to stream down. And you know that Dalton is really targeting that eye, Rob. Oh, yeah. A lot of times, uh, the southpaw fight the orthodox, you know, have a clash of heads or a toe stepping. You know, things like that when you find the orthodox in the uh, southpaw fight. And the uppercut as Dalton was off balance. Clark is definitely keeping his composure and still establishing that jab. He knows that's the uh, big factor in this fight. He needs to keep Dominic Dalton at bay. And he shoots him with a straight left, followed by an uppercut that barely missed. Dalton seemed to be energized from that cut because he saw that, okay, maybe I can turn things around in my favor. Oh, yeah, targeting that cut and, and getting more, uh, getting uh, to, to bleed more and, you know, trying to cause it to get in the face. Uh, Art possibly slowing down. Dalton comes forward, but Chamonte Clark wants the center of that ring. That is where he could do and feels where he is most effective. Oh, yeah, that's where definitely, uh, that's where the most damage is done at, keeping him in the middle of the ring, using that jab and landing that straight left hand. Dalton is chasing on a big straight right hand. They both connected. And Clark wisely spins around Dalton and ties him up, and hitting on the break was Dalton. But Dalton is using some of that veteran-like tactics. Oh, yeah, keeping the pressure on him. You know, uh, the cut and the body shots will slow uh, Clark down. A sharp right hook that connected by Clark. Now Dalton trying to work on the inside, but Clark spins him around. Clark isn't backing down either. He knows he has the cut, but he, he hasn't let that uh, affect him at all. Clark at times during fights shows a willingness to want to engage on the inside, but he's successful in the process. Oh, yeah, he definitely knows how to fight on the inside and, 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 and land them shots on the, body, on, on the body. And he knows that that can slow a fighter down as well. So if you, if you, can, if you can fight on the inside, why, why not take the chances? Dominic Dalton is checking chances. He's lunging in, jumping in, trying to do something substantial as we near the end of the round. Welcome back to PBC on FS1 here in Flint, Michigan. As you see the corner, Kevin Bedford and company, they are working on the right eye of Jelante Clark, a cut sustained back in the fourth round from a clash of heads. But Clark is doing well dealing with the adversity, Robert. And when you get cut the first or second time, it's something foreign to you. But Clark is doing well when he deals with it. Oh, yeah. But Dunn uh, definitely realized, you know, he had uh, take, trying to take advantage of the cut. So he picked up the pressure a little bit. 
aiming at the cut. But Clark is staying behind that jab. This is round six scheduled for eight. As Jamonte Clark still using his jab. And Dalton following him around. But Dalton is letting Jamonte Clark off the hook because he isn't putting together combinations. It's one shot at a time. Sometimes he'll look at Clark because he's getting blitzed with that jab. And then he allows Clark to dictate the pacing and it, the distance. Oh, yeah, he's trying not to waste any punches. He's trying to make every punch count. Any punch he throws, he's trying to land it and make it count so it can be effective. But should he be more willing to throw punches instead of waiting for that one foot perfect shot? Um, fighting a rangy fighter, you got punches coming from way out. Sometimes you can't even say them, so he's trying to take his time and not get time by uh, Clark's left hand. And Clark will tie up as Dalton looks to cut off the ring. Barreling in is Dominique Dalton, a 27-year-old out of Detroit. He's actually a protege of Emmanuel Stewart, who passed away five years ago. He spent two years living with Emmanuel in his house. Yeah, I bet you Emmanuel was giving him a lot of game and a lot of uh, insides on a uh, on a pro on a pro boxing level. I mean, but he grew up with him in, in the, um, amateurs as well. some pressure and have sustained offense. Yeah, that pressure is definitely getting to Clark. You know, wearing him down a little bit, but he got to stay behind the jab. But now Clark has got his big lumbering body on Dominic Dalton. And Clark is using it, he understands, to be able to tie up Dalton that allows the clock to tick down. Yeah, he's tying him up, laying on, trying to wear him down as well. Closing moments of the sixth round between Dominic Dalton and Jamonte Clark. Two more rounds remaining here in Flint, Michigan. And Dominic Dalton, they both hanging at the bell. And Dalton didn't even know that the bell is sounded. Here's some of the work from Dalton. You're watching PBC on FS1. Welcome back to PBC on FS1 here in Flint, Michigan. Jonathan Banks speaking with Dominic Dalton. And you can see, at least from their body reactions, they want Dominic Dalton to really step it up. Oh, yeah, they want uh, Dalton to step it up because, like I said, Clark is definitely taking the uh, control with that jab. And he's not letting that cut get to him. Well, this is a home game of sorts for Dominic Dalton as he lives in Detroit. Oh, yeah, so this is a familiar crowd to him, so he's actually uh, comfortable here in his hometown. He represents, probably represents the Crunk Boxing Gym. Jamonte Clark out of Cincinnati. Who is 23 years of age. Looking to close out the year in style. And now look at this. Some roughhousing going on between the two fighters. But it's more gamesmanship and things that happen when you get in there. Oh, yeah. Can't let things distract you, though. Got to stay on. Got to stay with on the game. Plan. Don't push up, don't push up. And now there's some tape that has come loose from the right glove of Jamonte Clark. Time is being called from the referee in charge, Michael Griffin, and they will cut that. And what's interesting is they're making the opposite corner do it. No, I was going to say, I've never seen that ever in my life. Take advantage of his time and take catch a breather. Well, I guess Michael Griffin said, you know what? Everyone's working towards one common goal. But. The corner, Jonathan Banks looked at Michael Griffin as to say, are you serious right now? And luckily they sent him over to Kevin Bedford, his corner, Jamonte Clark's corner, and they cut off the tape as we resume the seventh round. Dominic Dalton now coming forward. The big right hand spinning him around there as Dalton got caught up against the ropes there. 
and the fans not taking too kindly to Jamonte Clark taking advantage of Dominic Dalton who had himself sprawled out over the ropes. You gotta protect yourself at all times. Absolutely, well Dalton physically couldn't protect himself because he was against the ropes there. Right. This isn't an over the top battle royal. A chopping right hand by Jamonte Clark as Dominic Dalton is looking to make this a phone booth fight. 80 seconds left yeah, in the Dalton's, seventh. Dalton is making this rough in the inside, you know, tying him up and, and you know, book, trying to bully him. But Jamonte is sticking good behind that jab. It's all about going back to the basics. Under a minute remaining here in the seventh. Jamonte Clark is dealing with a very determined Dominic Dalton and has been successful. A big straight right hand backs up Jamonte Clark. Dominic Dalton looking to close out the seventh, possibly get a knockdown of sorts. He needs it. As at least to our eyes, it seems like Dalton is behind on the scorecards. Yeah, he's down on the scorecards. He's definitely picking up the pressure. But Clark is definitely using a jab and a high to his advantage. Very close as Michael Griffin separates them. But Dominic Dalton right back, aggressive. Trying to throw punches, and that ends the seventh. As you see, Dominic Dalton and Jamonte Clark continue. Big right hand by Dalton. You're watching PBC on FS1. Welcome back to PBC on FS1. Dominic Dalton. Being spoken to by Jonathan Banks, they need a big eighth round here, Robert, it seems like, to us from our vantage point. Oh yeah, he done has to come out and keep pressure on, uh, on Clark this whole round. Jamonte Clark aiming to elevate his record to 13 and 0. But he first must get past the test of Dominique Dalton. Clark Dalton. has to stay behind that jab. Boxing and boxing down the whole round, keeping him at bay and keeping him um, on the outside. So I know landing big punches when he get in the inside. A straight left that raised Dominic Dalton. And, and Jonathan Banks is literally begging, telling Dominic Dalton, this is your last round, your last round. Oh yeah, he knows Dalton has to give it everything he got to the finish bill to get back in this fight. What Dominic Dalton needs, and I'm gonna use a phrase from football, he needs an all-out blitz. He needs to continue the blitz. Oh yeah, keep that pressure on Clark, uh, using it, uh, fighting in the inside, and landing bigger shots all the way to the end. But Clark has stayed on the outside. But Dalton looking to close the gap here as a minute 10 has elapsed in the eighth. Parker's doing a good job boxing and standing on the outside. And you see that, and you know what, credit to the corner of Jamonte Clark for allowing the block to cut above the right eye, which occurred in the fourth from an accidental head, but to not be that much of a factor. A big right hand by Dominic Dalton. Clark isn't letting that uh, cut get to him at all. They did a good job in the corner of uh, stopping the blood from triggering. Dominic is, is fighting on the inside, and Clark is kind of letting him who is kind of fighting his fight, but he has to stay on the outside. Landing big shots like that. A laser straight left hand by Jamonte Clark. That connected. With 45 seconds remaining, Dominic Dalton has got to pull out an all-out assault here. Oh yeah, he has to let his hands go to the final bell. Clark is doing a good job still boxing on his toes. And using his reach. Dalton's following Jamonte Clark here, but Clark is staying away from danger. Oh yeah, 
Parker's not letting Dalton get near him. He's using that jab and tying him up when he gets in the inside and roughing him up. Well, he put his head down too, as we're seeing Jamonte Clark do to try to buy himself some time. Final moments of what has been a terrific fight between Jamonte Clark and Dominic Dalton. Back here, PBC on FS1, as we take a look, as we go the distance between Jamonte Clark and Dominic Dalton. Robert, let's see some of the action. Yeah, Clark started out early, keeping him at bay, using that uh, good breach, combina landing combination, and big blow. In the second round, you see him still establishing that jab to the body, switching speeds up, up and down with it, and boxing. Third round, as we see Dominic Dalton tried to close the distance, but he was unloaded on with a straight left from Jamonte Clark. Yeah, I believe this is when the cut occurred. The fourth round is here when the accidental headbutt oh, occurred. There he okay. was right there. And the blood started streaming above the right eye of Jamonte Clark. Dalton tried to take advantage, you know, get it inside. Take advantage of that cut. Now, Dalton was in landing with effective shots once he uh, once he uh, knew he was cut. In the seventh round, jump, Jamonte Clark went back to using the basics and the fundamentals. Oh, yeah, boxing him. He knew he had to box him and keep him uh, on the outside this whole the rest of the rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, John Belize has the contest. 76 to 76, a draw. Overruled by Judge Dan Grasschuk, who has the contest 78 to 74. And Ben Rochester, who has the bout 77 to 75 for your winner by majority decision. Jamonte Takes his record to 13 and 0.